Hey everybody, welcome back to another guitar lesson on 101 Guitar Lessons. My name is Lauren. Thanks so much for joining me again. Today we are going to talk about picking technique. In this case it's my right hand, but if you're a lefty then it'll be the other way. Um, but your picking hand, regardless, you really, a lot of people have a tough time picking up a pick for the first time. Some people are accustomed to learning the guitar classically or with their fingers. And when they hold a pick, it just feels awkward and weird. So we're going to talk about a few different things that you can work on while picking that will help improve your picking. Okay. Now, before we get into it, please just take half a second, press that like button on the video and share and subscribe. Most importantly, every little bit of support helps. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Let's jump right in. Let's take a close look at my picking hand. So right here, let's talk about how you hold a pick properly. Now, a bunch of different people hold the pick in different ways. Eddie Van Halen kind of holds it like this, which is weird and unorthodox. Other people hold it differently. That's fine. Let's just go with the traditional way that is the most effective. So if you're looking at me like this, kind of hold that shoot him McGavin and uh, go ahead and hook in your first finger, okay? Now the pick should rest between the tip of your finger and your first knuckle, and the pick really looks a lot like a triangle, right? So if you're holding, there are many people and many different types of picks, like jazz three picks that are kind of short and, and sharp, and there are large triangular picks and whatever, everything in between. Let's just start with a standard pick, okay? So this is a standard pick shape. It's generally the shape of a triangle. There's the base and there's the point. So what I want here is you to lay the base across the tip of your finger to your first knuckle like this, okay? Close your finger over top. Well, maybe if we look at it this way, it might be easier. So it goes like this, first finger goes across and you've got a sizable amount of pick hanging out, but not too much. You don't wanna be holding it like this because at this point, if there's too much hanging out, it's really floppy and hard to control. If it's too little, then it's probably, you're gonna be missing it, okay? You're gonna be missing the strings and flipping around. So you want just enough to, to hang out there. You want a solid grip on it. Um, what some people do is they'll drill holes in their picks, a few, like two or three holes, and that'll help the grip, or they'll put a little bit of double-sided tape or a touch of glue, or they'll just sand it down or rough it up with a, a key or a screwdriver. These are different techniques. There are some picks that have grips on them already, but, and if you have issues holding on to the pick, maybe you wanna try those. But I like the sound and feel of this type of pick. Okay, so that's enough about the pick. Now, <laughs> really, you wanna make sure that when you're holding it out, the, the pick is pointing directly away from you, kind of the length of the guitar. The, the, where the guitar arm is pointing is where the pick should be pointing. And when you bring your arm in, it should be pointing towards you, okay? You wanna make sure that um, the angle of your wrist isn't extreme and not too rigid either. It's fairly loose and relaxed, okay? Now, we're not talking about you know extreme speed picking here or anything like that. Let's just get it comfortable and um, use a simple exercise to get that moving. So don't worry about your left hand or your fretting hand right now. Let's just go to the sixth string and play a down stroke on that sixth string. Now play an up stroke and down and up and down and up. Now you'll notice one thing about me is that I like to have my pinky as an anchor on the guitar. It keeps my hand from kind of floating away. If I use my pinky, it might feel a little awkward at first, but if I, and it can move around, but it keeps me in close proximity to the strings and it gives me more control. Some people like to float where they don't do that at all, and that's okay. I find that a little bit more challenging. For me, you could try both ways. Let's take a close look at those techniques. So, when you're picking with your right hand, you know, alternate picking on that one string. This is the floating, so you'll see that I'm not touching the guitar at all, I'm just... And there's a slight swooping motion, kind of like going up and down as I go through. I'm really exaggerating it right now, <laughs> but it's very slight. Okay, it's not direct down and up. All right, there's very slight motion. Now, when I'm picking, I like to have my pinky on the face of the guitar. It can move around. It doesn't matter if I'm playing electric or acoustic but I like to have that there and it gives me control and it helps my hand stabilize so that I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. Okay, so try it both ways. So that's a big technique of mine is having that pinky down there. I, I don't have that pinky down when I'm strumming, but when it comes to picking technique in terms of picking separate notes or arpeggiating chords, I definitely have it down there most of the time. So try it both ways. 
The next thing that we need to talk about is the type of pick that you're using. So there are light picks, which are very floppy, okay? There are medium picks and there are heavy picks. Now this happens to be extremely heavy because I like a lot of control. As a beginner, I would suggest you use a medium to a heavy pick, all right? The, the material doesn't matter so much. I like to use this, um, I guess they call this like a Tortex kind of material, because I like the tone of it, the sound of it, but that's getting a little bit deep and very Eric Johnson-y, <laughs> so don't worry about that so much. But uh, in terms of the material itself, the only reason I see to use a light pick, which is really flimsy, almost like a piece of paper, is for sound. If you're recording, it has a very uh, percussive sound to it, and it's good for strumming, it's not good for single note picking. So if you're in the studio and you want a certain sound, that's what it's used for mostly. Um, I find medium and heavy gauge picks have much more control, and you'll, you'll feel that the notes are a lot cleaner and less sloppy when you're playing quick lines. All right, um, and you want to do some sort of like sweep picking, you know, you'll have much more control with a heavier gauge pick. So that's why I suggest you use a heavier gauge pick rather than a lighter gauge pick. Hope that makes sense. Uh, a lot of people like these little jazz three picks, which I have, but not handy, so I'm not going to grab it. Um, and they're great, but they're really small and hard to hold on to for somebody who's just getting started. So I would suggest uh, something of this size, sort of standard shape. That's pretty much it. You can go ahead and try finger exercises like this one. If you're looking for examples of finger exercises, check out this video right here. And I go through a few different ones where you can go through alternate picking. You can alternate pick chords. So if you're playing like an E major chord, for example. You're going through and playing each string alternately, right? Down on the six, up on the five, down on the four, up on the three, down on the two, up on the one. Do that a couple of times. It'll also help strengthen your, your uh, fretting hand. And then you can try some five string chords, like an A major chord, okay? So you can practice playing down on the five, up on the four, down on the three, up on the two, and down on the one. And it also helps you here when you're not quite, like if you're flubbing a note, like that, or getting some buzzing or whatever, rather than it being nice and clear. All right? So that's a great way to start picking arpeggios or arpeggiating chords. All right, you can do that with bar chords as well to practice the clarity of that. All right, sixth and fifth root are important because they'll feel different if you're starting on the fifth string or if you're starting on the sixth string. So those are a bunch of different exercises that you can try to, uh, to get your picking together. The other thing, I'll give you one more, is try string skipping. So as you're arpeggiating the chord, instead of this, right, or you're playing six, five, four, three, two, one, you can play six, four, five, three, <laughs> four, two, three, one. Six, wait, six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. There you go. Been a long day. What can I say? But make sure that you're alternating. Uh, always down, up, down, up. Notice I'm still using my pinky for that. Again, you can try it or not. Um, but that's a way to gain control when you're moving more than one string over at a time. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section down below. Please take a second to just press that subscribe button and that like button. Every little bit of support really does help and I do appreciate it. Remember, guitar is not a destination. It is a journey, so enjoy the journey, enjoy the process, and I'll see you guys later. Take care. Mm -hmm.